Hello. Hi, my name is uh, Steve Loper, and we'll have a quick 20-minute session today about uh, building secure integrations with next-gen name credentials. Um, one thing you do, uh, if you can take a picture of the QR code, they're giving away free stuff if you give them good feedback. So, um, Once again, my name is Steve Loper. I'm a Salesforce architect. Um, and oh, who is Steve Loper? Um, I'm the... Salesforce Architect, and this is the first time I've done that, so there's a little bit of nerves here. So, um, But I'm the Salesforce Architect for SysRx. I get to oversee 27 different service cloud orgs that are hubs, pharmacies, and nursing coordination. It's a big role. Um, one of the things I get, up, get to do every day is I get to work with a large team and we get to help thousands of patients get on therapy. We get to help them get the medication that they need, um, help them through uh, their patient journey. Um, it's, it's a challenging role um, when one of the things that uh, we get, uh, sorry, let me back up. In one of our town halls, um, we got to hear a recording of a parent calling in to get financial assistance for a, a medication that, that their child need. Um, and they were a, we were able to get them financial support. And there's uh, hear, hearing the parent's sense of relief that they're able to get their child on therapy was, it, it brings me to tears. Um, and after hearing this call, I knew the exact line of code, I knew the exact error handling, and I knew the exact API that we called to help get this uh, get this patient on therapy. Knowing that m what I do every day has an impact that makes those late night deployments a lot easier. It makes those code views a lot easier on that. And that's, that's one of the things that I, I enjoy about my job. Another thing that I get to do every day is I get to work with an incredibly brilliant woman in tech, the senior, develop senior director <laughs> for software engineering at a sister ex, Nicole Loper. I also get to be married to her for 20, 26 years. Um, Salesforce has been a big part of uh, my career, my development. I've got the tattoo, so I'm, I'm committed to the cause on this. Um, but let's talk about some name credentials on this. Um, what are name credentials? Name credentials are the keys to doing outbound integrations. Um, it's a very, it's, it's, it's how you make your, all, all your HTTP HTTP outbound calls. Um, it's, it's an important tool to be able to use because it handles a lot of things. Um, go to the next slide. Um, it's a way to centralize your credential management. Um, it supports multiple authorization protocols. It's a unified authentication flow, a unified authentication for flows in Apex. And it also simplifies cross-org communication. And cross-org communication is my favorite thing to talk about. And at the end of this presentation, there'll be a QR code that you can take a picture of, and I'm gonna save you about 10 hours of Googling on how to connect two orgs together on that. So centralized credential management. Um, I've stored, or I've, I'm sorry, I've seen um, credentials stored in custom labels. I've seen it stored in code. I've seen it stored in static resources. I've seen it stored in a lot of different places on that. If you use name credentials, you can store your credentials in one location. It eliminates that, hey, where is this API call? Why are my credentials failing? So if you use name credentials, it gives you a central place to, to be able to uh, store your credentials at. The other portion that name credentials does is it gives you the ability to have dynamic code references. And like I said before, one of my favorite things to talk about is cross-org communications. And being able to dynamically set where you're saying an HTTP call out to, that's what name credentials does. Um, give you a quick example here of setting dynamic code references for an HTTP call out. Um, we use service cloud, so we, we depend, upon, depend a lot upon the case object. So if you can have a uh, new custom field inside of your case object that looks up to a, some custom metadata, now you can dynamically set where to call out to the, where you can send your HTTP callouts. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so by using, Name credentials eliminates you having to have multiple switch statements inside of code. It eliminates you um, uh, doing a lot of guesswork. So you, you're able to do that dynamic code references on that. 
um, multiple authorization protocols. This is a fun part. So a lot of times you'll get a, um, uh, an API spec. And that API spec for UAT may be a basic authorization token, but in prod is using OAuth. How do I code for that? How do I write the Apex code that in UAT is going to have send auth authentication one way, and in prod is going to send it the other way? Name credentials has entered the chat. That's what it can do. Because it acts as kind of that main uh, entry point into any HTTP callouts, you can go from no authorization to a JWT token, to a custom authentication, to OAuth, to whatever version of authentication. It just, it eliminates your admins and developers, or your admins and developers having to rewrite plumbing codes. That's, that's the power of it. It takes, takes a lot of the work out of it. The other portion where it can with the multiple authentication protocols, a lot of times when you're, you're integrating with a third party vendor, they may say, hey, cool, we've got this great new API here, I'm gonna give it out to you. And then you're gonna starting off with a bearer token. And then the next week they call you and say, hey, our security people have said, yeah, we gotta update this to OAuth 2.0 or even OAuth 1.0, but you've already have your admins and developers developing code based off of the original API spec. So if you can use name credentials, it sticks in that, it, it, uh, use name credentials, that makes it so that you're not having to go back and rewrite code. You, all have, you can go back in and just ch uh, change the authentication type and no one's the wiser. Um, unified authentication flows for, unified authentication for flows in Apex. Um, Within healthcare, one of the common APIs that's out there is, is looking up prescriber information. And these APIs can be very large. Um, there may be different functions inside of your org that will say, hey, I just need, I need a Salesforce administrator to be able to write a flow that makes one API call out and just does an address verification. But then in that same API, I may have a bulk process that I need uh, a developer to write a queuable process that runs every Thursday uh, on, uh, that it runs every Thursday. By using name credentials, you've eliminated uh, You've eliminated duplicate code. You're allowing admins to do the, uh, admins to do their work and then developers to do their work. It, it helps in just reducing some of the clutter and it helps you know a uh, you know a set of uh, auth credentials being in a static resource file to be able to read. The um, so let's take a quick look at this um, to be able to support both admins and uh, admins and Apex developers. You would go in and set up your, your name credentials, and there's some steps to uh, there's some steps to doing that process. Whether you're using JWT or any of the other custom methods, but as far as implementation, once you've set that up, then from a flow and they do an HTTP callout, all they have to do is reference that individual uh, name credentials. The other part about it is, is when you deploy the flow, it's going to look at the name credentials. You're not going to have to worry about, oh, hey, do I need to go change credentials for my UAT version versus my prod version on that? And then in um, Apex, you can call the specific name credentials to make the call out on that. It just it simplifies a lot of the uh, uh, it simplifies a lot of the the plumbing code that happens on that. Um, all right, now here's my favorite thing, cross-org communication. I think I have 10 minutes and 59 seconds to fill on this. Um, cross-org communications. At AssistRx, we got an incredible opportunity to, to connect a hub, a pharmacy, a nursing app all together. Now, these are different orgs. So imagine connecting three Salesforce orgs all together that are all of a different uh, uh, connecting just three Salesforce orgs together. Um, I spent a couple sleepless nights trying to figure this out because there was so much information. There were content documents, there, were, there was accounts, there was cases, there was statuses that needed to be able to sync between these three orgs. I, I mean, there was, there was a couple sleepless nights. And the other requirements we had is we had to do it securely. With patient information, you have PHI, so you have to have it secure. There's no option for not having it secure on that. And it needed to be instant. 
because of those thousands of patients that, that depend on us to get them on therapy, there could not be a delay. We also had to make it so that it was repeatable. If there was a failure or somebody kicked off the cord or the internet, we had to make it repeatable. So enters na name credentials, enters the um, uh, name credentials has entered the chat. Um, what were we, we, were be, we were able to do is to set up two orgs to be able to talk to each other. Salesforce also gave, uh, I think it was about four or six months ago, there's four nice API licenses that allow two orgs to talk together so that you're not increasing your licensing costs. That was huge. So what we were able to su successfully do with name credentials um, was get two orgs to talk together and then we were able to make it scale because of that, um, the cust uh, because of the dynamic references to the name credentials, we are able to make one org talk to six orgs and one org talk to 10 orgs. And because of the patient data that we're dealing with, we had to make sure it was accurate. And so um, using those name credentials, using the name credentials and that dynamic configuration really made the job easier. And that, um, it also helped us meet a deadline. That was my other fear on it. When, I, um, when we were developing the solution, it was how do we meet this deadline? Do we, we, we can't reinvent the wheel on that. And so that's why name credentials was such a, uh, uh, a powerful tool to use. Um, it's also deployable. Another great thing that happened during this, during this process is, is we were able to give our admins, hey, you want, you want, trail bad you want your trailhead badges? Here's a great a trailhead badge on how to set up name credentials. So the team got to learn and the developers got to learn, which for, for me as a Salesforce architect is really key. I want to give the team the ability to grow and to learn to expand on that. Um, let's see. So when you're setting up cross-org communications, these are the basic steps. And I'll give you the QR code at the end of it. But in the destination orgs, so you, you have two orgs. You have your source org and you have your destination org. Um, you create a destination app in your, or I'm sorry, you create a connected app in your destination org. And then in your source org, you establish them as the authentication provider. Um, and then you set up the name credentials. Now, when you make them talk together, you flip it. You, whatever what's your, your destination org before now becomes your source org. And the great thing is that those four API licenses that Salesforce gave us, now you're not having to go to finance and say, hey, I need another integration license. Because you know, sometimes finance doesn't like uh, playing that. Um, there is a little magic with when you're using that API license because you, uh, to, uh, to do the token authentication, but uh, if, if you're not through the UI, but um, that's part of the fun there. Um, another tool that you can use on name credentials is especially if you have if you're working with an outside vendor um, sometimes you get the call to say hey we have a token refresh policy or our uh, our, our compliance people have said hey we're going to refresh this every 90 days you can get the tokens that they send you set up name credentials in prod and make sure they work because I've def I'm sure I'm not the only person in the room that has gotten credentials from a uh, outside org, and all of a sudden it's broke, and you've got a name, and you've got an error happening. So it allows you to um, uh, make sure that the two systems are talking together on that. Um, next item on that. Okay, there's the fancy QR code, and what that will do in a very humorous way will walk you through the steps to set up org to org communications um, on that one, go all the way. Or if you just want me in the photo too. Um, but the, the biggest thing with that setup process is follow the directions. Um, one thing we've done with our admins and our teams is this gives a very repeatable process to give out to the developers. Say, hey, you're setting up name credentials, follow the directions on that. And I believe, oh, we've got some cool features, uh, cool features coming up with name credentials. Um, the two that are the ones that jumped out of me are uh, custom headers and API keys. Um, you're able to add um, more, uh, more custom headers that can be based off of formulas. Um, one way that I've seen this implemented is if you need additional logging, 
um, based off of flows. You can add header information into there. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility on that. Um, and then permission set assignment. So what this, what you can do, the, the cool trick that you can do with permission set assignments is, is you can put a timer on them. So if your credentials are going to expire, you can switch permission sets and then the, uh, uh, and then you can still deploy things to prod. So it's a neat little way to do feature toggling on that. Thanks for letting me speak out.